anything that someone hasn't tried to make alcohol out of? I mean, I was thinking about how vodka is made from potatoes. Fucking potatoes! Someone must have been really bored when they thought of that. What else can you make alcohol from? Is there anything left that simply nobody has tried? Some bizarre exotic fruit that looks like an alien cactus that you have to go to freaking Chinatown just to find a store that might carry it. Then you take it home, stick it in a jar, and let that fucker ferment. Has anybody just tried that? Or is this another way in which the world is postmodern, where everything has been done? I wonder about these things. Like beets. Has anybody ever made beet beer? Beet wine? Beet brandy? Has anyone even thought to try? Maybe it's good. Maybe it's suitable only for stripping grease off of engine parts. Do you know? Does anyone know? I bet someone knows. Someone out there has probably tried it. Maybe that's why we never heard about it. Either it was terrible or it killed the guy. So what exactly is the difference between a hug and a big hug? I mean, someone says, come here and give me a big ol' hug. What exactly are you supposed to give them? What makes a hug big versus normal-sized? It seems to me that what they're really asking for is enthusiasm. You're supposed to hug them harder. Uh, make that with more strength. Using the word harder implies something else entirely if we're talking about males. And digression. But for my money, calling that a big hug doesn't really jibe. For it to be a big hug, I'd say you'd have to actually increase the size of the hug somehow. Stand with your legs akimbo, put your hands on their shoulder blades so your elbows stick out, put on about five sweatshirts to make your torso bigger, I, I don't know. Careless language just bugs me. Even if everybody knows what you mean and we're communicating, I like to think about how, say, space aliens would react to this language when first encountering it. If we attempt to be as literal as possible with our speech, we can ensure that we'll be understood by everybody. In theory, anyway. It's just something that gets under my skin from time to time. Just saying. You know, if you really think about it, every time a bird sings, beautiful though it may be, what he's really saying is, God damn it, I'm horny. You ever notice that there are some things in this world that belong to other people which you can use, indeed consume, which they don't demand you replace? Toilet paper comes to mind. You go over to a friend's place and they make their super mondo chili burger, so you end up spending several hours in the bathroom. And by the time you're done, you've used up a roll or two of toilet paper. Do they ask you to replace what you've used? Do they ask you for a buck or two? No. In fact, they're probably glad you used it. Imagine if you hadn't. I think that's strange. Certain items in this world you can just use without any recompense. Isn't that strange? When they named the Flintstones, how did they decide on that? I mean, okay, the decision to base their name on stones or rocks as opposed to dinosaurs or mammoths or something isn't really a huge mystery. It's set in the Stone Age, and that's not a hard logical leap to make. But from there, how did they decide on Flint? They could have picked just about any rock name without sounding too outrageous. Granite, shale, quartz, pyrite, zinc, etc. The show could easily have been the Shalesons or the Zinc Stones. Which brings me to stones. Why did it end that way? Why not rocks? The Flint Rocks isn't such a bad name for a family. Hell, when I was a kid, I lived next door to a family whose last name was Rock. Seriously, no kidding. Anyway, it just makes me smile a little to picture executives and writers sitting in a boardroom, Chinese food containers all over the place, tossing out these ideas while the CEO growls, no one is going home until we've given these cavemen a name, damn it. You know what? Fuck nymphomaniacs. Handicapped is a weird word. Break it down. Handy and capped. Someone who is handicapped is hardly handy, and it has nothing to do with hats. So, well, it's a weird word. I mean, okay, it makes perfect sense if you really think about it. There's a cap, as in a limit, on your ability to be handy. But still, it's one of those words that doesn't sound like what it means on the surface. It's made even worse by the difference between having a handicap and being handicapped, as in the difference between having, say, a non-working limb versus having an artificial limit on your scoring ability in a game. I mean, one is about being really bad at something, the other is about being really good at something, yet we use the same word. I'm surely not pointing out anything original, but it's still weird. 
In America, we have three inalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Do you ever get the impression that happiness took track in high school? I'd like to say something about the whole hot dogs in packs of ten, buns in packs of eight thing, but I wouldn't be saying anything new. What does mystify me, though, is this. Hot dog buns come pre-sliced, but they're also stuck together along the slice, as if they were baked that way. So how the hell do they slice them while they're still stuck together? It just doesn't seem possible. Am I the only one to whom words like Jewish or Spanish sound more like a comparative description and less like a nationality? Someone who is Jewish has Jew-like qualities, probably without actually being a Jew. At least that's how it sounds to my ears. You know, is she a Jew? Well, she's Jew-ish. Does a Jewish pirate have an R mitzvah? <laughs> So I'm watching a friend's video on YouTube, and as background music, he used Ride of the Valkyries as performed by the United States Marine Corps Band. So what I want to know is this. If one of the musicians fucks up, in performance or during practice, I don't care which, does he have to do push-ups or peel spuds or something? Is it truly an insult to call your father a motherfucker? I guess it depends on your mother, doesn't it? They call them rituals, but frankly, I think we're a lot poorer for them. So I wonder, do superstitions have secret identities? You know, where they walk around dressed like regular stitions, blending in and looking for trouble they need to stop? You know what there hasn't been for a while? A movie with a surprise twist ending that we're warned not to reveal to anyone who hasn't seen it. You know the kind of movie I'm thinking of here. Soylent Green is made out of what? I mean, what have we had, really? The Crying Game? The Sixth Sense? M. Night Shema Lama Ding Dong, or whatever the hell his name is, has kind of tried, but let's face it, at this point he really is running out of ideas. And most of his aren't nearly as, I don't know, quotable pop culture material, I guess. I mean, what do we have? I see dead people? That's about it. I think someone needs to make a movie like that again. Something where the entire world is turned upside down by the end of the flick, and with a warning in the trailer not to reveal the ending to people. Just saying. I've never heard a British person say, who to thunk it? Would anybody actually dance any better if they had two right feet? Please take the time to rate this video. And hey, if you dig what I do, subscribe! You might also enjoy my webcomic, The Adventures of Kinira Baxter. You'll find a link in the info bar. So, who wants cake? Ah, you have to rate first.